You are now listening to the sounds of Mood Swing Music Group. Hey yo, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, man. And what we gonna do today, man, we gonna keep it simple. We gonna get into some more of these little uh, machine tips and tricks, man. Little stuff that you may or may not know that you can do in machine, but uh, they are very helpful. Let's So uh, let's get started real quick, man. Let's start off with, what I wanna show you first, man. Let's start off with something simple. Let's do like the... I know what I want to show you. Check this out. Check this out. This is something that we can definitely look at. Uh, we just pick a kit. And then we got the kit right here from my last video. Let's slide this up. Let's double click over here. We can actually slide this down. This is for all your MIDI controls and stuff down here, but we get to that in another, that's a later video. Let's go to, let's find us a hi-hat. So what we can do with this hi-hat, we can do several things with this hi-hat. We can hit record and we can record the hi-hat. show you something let's put it on four measures there let's get this in here we can go ahead and delete this that's using the pads right so let's do it one more time so record So as you can see, you can real time put them in with the pads or the keys on your uh, on your uh, keyboard, or you can go in like this and double click them where you want them. I use this sometimes because when I want to be really precise, sometimes I go in and I actually add add notes and this is very helpful let you hear this so you can add them like that by double clicking in, in each space or you can use your pencil tool so the pencil tool is right down here at the bottom and you're gonna click on it and once you click on it you can take these hi-hats and you can just drag across there. And let's play that. Now, if you want to make any variation of this, there's a way you can make a variation of this while it's right here. So what we can do, we'll say we get to, we get right here on three. And say, friends, we want this to be different. We can go, and we can change this 116 to one, let's go 164. And then we'll just get right in here and we'll do this first. We'll erase those. And then we'll take our pencil tool and we'll draw some in. Now watch how this goes. And if you want to zoom in and really get all the way in there. And this is just when you want to do some, those times when you're doing some real intricate work. You drop some more notes in there to make it not have that pause in it. And then, uh, 
doesn't hear it without that pause in it. It's when you get your, your hi-hat roll. And you can put them anywhere you want to put them, man. I mean, that's up to you. But to get that hi-hat roll, you just simply go from 116th and go up to 164th or 132nd or whichever way you want that hi-hat roll to be. It's up to you. So let me get off of my pencil tool so that I can delete this. And that is the pencil tool, man. I encourage you to play with it. You can use it on all the instruments. You can use it wherever you want, however you want. It's up to you. That's just one of those things, man. It's a nice tool to have, a nice tool to know of, especially nowadays. It's a lot of hi-hat rolls and stuff in, uh, in the music. So, uh, man, put it to use, man. See what you think about it. You know what I'm saying? And, uh think you'll like it because you can use it on drum or you can make drum rolls and all kind of stuff with it like that also so the next thing i want to show you man is is just a way to look at things different so you notice whenever you open machine up it always come up with this orange with this amber looking color right here which is fine so we are open us up another section right and it comes up with the green Oops, my bad. I did the wrong thing. Delete that. You open you up another group, and it opens up with yellow. Next group, green. Next group, like a aqua, teal, purple, violet, and so on and so on. Red. It just keeps going. It starts back over at your uh, orange here. But what I want to show you is how you change the colors on all of this stuff. You can go into each one of these, man, and just change the colors however you want. You make that one red, and if you notice, it changed the entire set of red when you do it like that. Now, you don't have to keep everything in here red, so you can go in these individually, and you can make your, you can, you can make your kick. Let's say we want to make it this color. You can make your snare this color. You can make your hi-hats. You can take and put them in a color range. And this is very helpful, man, because if you start doing this all the time, it just helps you out because when you color code stuff and you start using stuff by color, it helps you organize a lot of this stuff that you're doing up here. It really do, man. I mean... Sometimes you won't believe how simple, how easy it is to just go with a, a color. And like if you always go with that color, man, you can always basically, uh, you can always basically, so say for instance, like you make tracks all the time and your uh, drum kit is always on red. You know what I'm saying? It's just a way, it's just a way to be able to look up in an instant and see what you're looking for and know what you want to do. But if you notice right here, this says all of me kit. That's the kit that I loaded, right? So say friends, I wanted to get right here and I wanted to make this pianos. All you got to do is right click, go down to rename and just type in piano. Let's do it real quick. hit enter and bam now you named it piano so not only do you have it color coded you can get in here and you can have it actually have your groups with each name on there so if you make a custom some kind of custom sample or whatever you can go in here and name it and you can say I can call it the gold mine sample and there you go and it actually gives it that name down there so you know what you're looking at when you're looking at it while you're doing your sequence and your mixing and all that stuff so that's what you that's that that's helpful with that man it's just arrangement ideas and ways to do different things and you can also uh i mean not only just go down here and change all the colors you can change all the colors here you can also rename these patterns and you can also rename the scenes so say for instance this scene is the intro you right click up there 
you get right there rename and you call it intro or intro one or however many intros you got and you hit enter boom and now it says intro so that's another tip and trick man it just it's gonna help you sequence your tracks better and help you uh stay focused on your project better and a lot of times i'll do that as i'm working so i don't lose track of stuff but then a lot of times there are most times i'll do all of that at the end after i'm done creating the music and and, and putting everything together I go in here and start naming everything and, and giving it the proper title so that I can just look up and know what I'm or know that I'm know what I'm working with. Tongue tied there for a minute. So that's renaming and re and changing colors, man. So then one more thing that I wanna show you guys is after you make a track, let's do something here. Let's just load a sample. Any sample, let's go to loops. And we'll just load. So we'll load a sample. So there's several ways to load a sample. So you can double click it. And it loads it in right there like that. Or... Let's reset that. Or you can just take it and drag it and drop it. And it does the exact same thing. So it's up to you how you want to load a sample. I mean, that's just one of those things that uh, is, is preference. A lot of times you might be working and uh, you don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to lose track of what you're doing. You just want to double click it and put it in there. It's easy to put it in there. Uh, what else we want to do here? So that's loading a sample, and then, uh oh, hit that. So then, after you load a sample, let's say for instance you want to take this sample and you want to take this sample and. Let's see here. Let's export this sample. I don't know why you would want to export it, but if you want to export this sample, you could go here. You could go to the little triangle there, go to file, go down to export audio. And right here in export audio, man, is where you can actually pick how you want to export this sample. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, it comes up. You want to export it pretty much the way it got it right here. The only thing I normally change is this folder where I take stuff to. I'll, you can click right inside of here. And you can tell it where you want it to go. So we'll just say desktop. And then we'll say choose. And as you can see, it says user MSMG desktop. Name is new project. Normally, it'll have a name of your project right here. And it, it'll say dope beat or whatever you name the project and that's what that is. And then you'll hit export and it'll export this sample to your desktop. And then you can take that sample and use it wherever you want, however you want, in whatever program you want. Because some of these samples don't translate over to other programs unless you uh, do something like this, convert them so that they will. So you can take samples and sounds. You can even create your own samples and do it like that. And just uh, export them over. Once you export them over, you got them. And basically, it's a free sample at that point. It's not in your machine software. And you can just take it, man, and drop it in Logic or whatever. And, and change the pitch. Do whatever you want to do. And you're good to go. So today, man, I think we're going to stop right there, man. That's a few tips and tricks. Just things that you see on the screen that you probably don't mess with. Uh, I'll drop another one of these tips and tricks this week, man, just so we can look at some different stuff. It's so much stuff on the screen, and I notice a lot of people don't use a lot of it. I don't personally use a lot of it, but I know how to use a lot of it. So what I'll do, man, I just keep making these periodically, man, so that you guys can uh, pretty much have those tools at your fingertips. 
so that when you're working, man, it just make for an easier workflow and make better and help you make better music because you don't have to think those things through. So if you like what you saw in this video, man, like, share, comment, subscribe. I like to give a shout out to all my new subscribers, man. I see y'all out there. We're going to get to that magic number, man. I'm going to give away a piece of this equipment in my studio. And until then, like always, man, don't just be, be a producer, be productive. And like, like we say every time at the end of the video, peace.